Today I have a new knife from Kaiser on my review table, the Kaiser Noble. It was announced at SHOT Show 2020 and is a flipper style knife, as you can see here, with a 3.5 inch blade and a 3.25 inch effective cutting blade. It's got titanium scales and it's an urban style EDC knife. And it comes in at just under 3 ounces. This is a prototype version that Kaiser asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at and I jumped at the chance. The expected launch date is sometime in July 2020, but that may be delayed due to the pandemic. That said, like all my other reviews, I will try to remain impartial and give my true opinion on it, the good, not so good, and the ugly. Knives are something I've been really been wanting to get into on this channel, so if you too want to see some more knife reviews, give this video a like, or leave a comment, and smash that bell icon to be notified of new reviews. In case you don't know who Kaiser is, they're a Chinese knife brand making high quality yet affordable knives, and they're known for make using genuine blade steels and other high quality materials with high quality workmanship at affordable prices. They are one of the original high-end Chinese knife manufacturing companies, and Kaiser is creating new designs along with partnering with respected custom knife designers too. The designer of this knife is Sebastian Erdogan, and if you follow him on social media on Instagram like I do, this knife is very much in his style. He's worked with Kaiser in the past on a few other designs like the Raja and Kobold, for the new this year. And these speed holes here not only achieve a reduction in overall weight, but as you can tell, they're part of the overall design. They kind of give the your fingers a place to sit, as you can see here. As I mentioned before, the Noble is a flipper design. It has a very small flipper tab with some jimping at the end here that you can see. Despite its small size, it flips relatively well with a light style type flick. The small tab also helps comfort in the pocket as there's not as much there to bother you and peck at your fingers. And I like that Kaiser has chosen to keep their labeling simple and the blade steel is labeled here on the end S35VN. Some official stats from Kaiser. Overall length came in at 7.875 inches. Blade length at 3.5 inches. Cutting length at 3.25 inches. Blade width is 3 quarters of an inch. Blade thickness is 0 0.13 inches. And the steel is S35VN. And the MSRP is expected to be around the $155 mark. Couple comparisons here. Here's a ZT0460. Here is a Spyderco Delica and a Benchmade 940. So you can see here it's pretty close in size to that Benchmade 940. It's bigger than the Delica. Overall, I like this size of knife. Uh, the 940 is one of my absolute favorites and the Kaiser Noble is right in there, similar size. Here is the packaging, and this might be the downfall of my black background here, because the packaging is also black and matte. After you take the cover off, you've got a bifold box here, and inside you get the paperwork here and a cleaning cloth. So here is the warranty and safety information. It's a knife. It's sharp. You know, be careful. You've also got a Kaiser cleaning cloth here, which is kind of nice. Once inside that, you get this nice uh, nylon pouch with a Kaiser patch. Mine isn't 100% square, uh, but not a huge thing. Inside, it's got a little Kaiser label as well. It's Velcro and it's soft felt. And then the knife just sits in here. This knife is fairly ambidextrous. I had no issues flipping it and closing it, which is easy to do with my left hand. Pops open and I can close it with my left thumb and my right hand. Again, no issue and I can close it up no problem. Uh, the one caveat for me here is I'm pretty ambidextrous, so it may not quite be as easy for you. So the good here, this knife is made from grade five TC4 titanium and it's very smooth. You can see it's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. I've wiped this knife down quite a bit here, but as I keep touching it, it picks up some kind of marks from the, the moisture from my hands. Not really a concern. It's a very tumbled finish. All the edges here are nicely chamfered as they should be. No complaints there. Inside the scales have been milled and this is hard to see, really impossible to see um, on camera, but that's a nice way to reduce weight and I really like that. The lock bar here has a steel insert and you can see lockup is pretty good. Since it's got that steel lock bar, there's no stick between the titanium and the blade steel. If you'd like to see a takedown and cleaning video, let me know in the comments below. The blade is running on ceramic bearings and the blade itself is made from domestic U.S. Crucible Industries CPM S35 VN. And that is marked down here just on the bottom of the flipper. Kind of hard to see on camera there. CPM S35VN is widely regarded as a fantastic price to performance steel for EDC uses. And it's got a nice stonewash finish on here that you can see. And I like that because it helps hide any scratches it picks up during use. I have the steel on a few other knives and I've been happy with its edge retention and relative ease of sharpening. The blades grind is 
a great slicer with its full flat grind style that transitions there to a mild Tonto. Personally, I'm not a huge Tonto fan, but this one is mild, and I found it to be quite useful, especially when opening packages where I don't want to dip that tip too far into the contents. The blade spine here is uh, rounded a bit. It's not 100% round, but it's not uh, square either, so this doesn't make a good scraper. You may have a little bit of a problem with your guided angle sharpening system, but I don't think that's too large of an issue here. Where the Tonto meets the belly of the blade, I can see that the grinds aren't 100% even, but this is really nitpicking between sides. They're really close. Uh, this side's just a little bit shallower than uh, the front side here. Overall, it's a good blade and one that shouldn't be too hard to sharpen at home if you're comfortable with multi-angle sharpens. A few notes about the construction here. This is using T6 Torx screws on the scales to hold them together and on the clip. And these are relatively short screws and I had no issues taking them apart with my Weira Boker driver here. And in doing so, they do have just a little bit of blue Loctite on them. This must be relatively weak Loctite because it really didn't stick too much. Just enough to keep the edges of the screws from backing out. The pivot here is using T8. Blade centering is perfect from the factory, as you can see here to my eyes. And there's no side to side blade play or up and down. It really locks up quite well. Uh, probably one of the best locking up knives I have from the factory. Kaiser's warranty is a limited lifetime warranty against parts and defects. They usually will ship replacement parts to consumers at low or no cost for those that want to do their own repairs if something comes up. Depending on who you buy from too, retailers can also help with repairs if needed. Uh, shipping it back to Kaiser in China is an option too if you want to, but that adds some significant time and cost. If you're doing your own night maintenance, I don't see that being a huge problem. The not so good here. Deployment here is quite good and smooth and easy. As you can see here, it fires right out of my hands, no problem. But that all depends on where your fingers land. I like to use these speed holes and then the edges chamfered around them to kind of let me know where I put my fingers. But the real side when deploying it from the right side is where your fingers land. And this knife doesn't have a lot of width to it. So I sometimes find myself putting my fingers on, my, on the lock bar here. And when I do that, that makes it hard to open because that detent ball just keeps everything in place. So once you move your fingers, no problem, it fires right away. Balance point on this knife is about an inch behind the pivot here. It's not ideal, but not something I really notice. When I have the knife in my right hand, I do get a little bit of a hot spot on the index finger if I'm gripping it super hard. And that's kind of down here on the bottom of the scales. They're, they're thinner, they're nicely chamfered, but it just creates a little bit of a hot spot for me. It's not really a big deal. The ugly, I like deep carry pocket clips. You can see I've got one here on my 940 and I have them on pretty much all, all the knives and flashlights that I regularly carry on a regular basis. If I don't have one on, I find I just don't end up carrying it as much. I like to conceal my EDC and I find it's more comfortable when I bury it deeper in my pocket too. This brings me to the clip on the Noble. It's deep carry and personally I like the design, but at least on this prototype it feels kind of flin thin and flimsy and doesn't make great contact with the scales here. And this is hard to show on video. My stills do a little bit better job of that. It also sounds a little bit flimsy and I'll bring it up to my microphone and show you. It's super thin in here, which is great for weight savings but also makes me a little bit fearful of snagging it and causing issues. This hurt pocket retention. It never really fell out of my pocket or came close, but it doesn't feel as secure as I'd like or as secure as other knives. On thinner pants like dress slacks, it could be more of an issue than jeans. The clip is 3D milled out of titanium as well. I spoke to Kaiser about this and they're taking it seriously and plan to make some revisions before the knife goes to production. To be fair, I've not had a problem with the clip snagging on anything during daily carry for several weeks. So it might just be kind of perception as well. My conclusion is my use for this knife is an urban EDC and in the office. There isn't a ton of texture here on the handle. So it's not something for me I'd really want to use for super rough or tactical use, but it's not really the market for this knife. For urban EDC, it works quite well. It's lightweight at three ounces and the blade is slicey. It's an excellent package and letter opener and has stood up to a bit more rigorous tasks like some cardboard breakdown duty and thick plastic straps with ease. Despite the smaller flipper tab, this knife opens quite well as long as you have your fingers off the lock bar. Personally, I like the overall look of this knife. It's gonna be one of those designs that you either love or hate because of that. The speed holes for me do it. 
and it's kind of a little bit more of a second factor cool. Overall, I'm a fan of the Kaiser Noble. It ticks my boxes for an urban EDC knife with good materials, good value, and an interesting functional design. Kaiser said they expect the production version of this knife to ship out to retailers in July 2020, but production and shipping are difficult right now and subject to change. MSRP is expected around the $155 mark according to Kaiser. Some of the well-known knife retailers like Blade HQ have it already listed and have an email notification that you can sign up for so you're notified when it comes into stock. If you're interested, if you like what you've seen here, go check it out. As always guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of this review. I hope you appreciated a knife review. It's something, like I said, I hope to get more of on the channel here soon. Make sure you're subscribed, share, and like, and I hope you're staying safe. Thanks for watching.